I don't know if you can tell or not, I have a slight southern accent. Um, it's barely noticeable. <laughs> Around here. <laughs> Sad part is, we don't even notice it back home. I'm from Raleigh, North Kakalaki. <laughs> Raleigh, North Carolina. Man, if you ever listen to me, then you listen to my family, I sound like a Rhodes Scholar. <laughs> I sound like Stewie from Family Guy. That man, really. The rest of my family, when they talk, their lips don't even move. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm wearing a hat. I'm probably one of the few comics coming up here wearing a hat. I wear a farm hat, I wear a hat because of the fact that I still farm, as far as the IRS is concerned. Um, <laughs> I don't know if y'all farm or no farmers, but it's the best place to hide money I can think of. <laughs> I do, I still farm as far as the IRS is concerned. I can tell you one thing, you've had a lot of comics over here in the last four or five years, two or 300 comics. I bet you never had one with a valid pesticide license in his wallet and 12 hours of manure application training from the great state of North Carolina. <laughs> that, lady, that lady knows what I'm talking about. She laughed at every horse joke. <laughs> you live out on a farm, darling? Because you laughed at all the home? You know, yeah, okay. I didn't know you were laughing at all of Mark's uh, horse jokes. So I said, that's a woman knows what I'm talking about. I'm certified to spread crap with the best of them. <laughs> I'm wearing a hat. I wear a hat everywhere I go except bed in the shower. Reason for it is this. <laughs> yeah, what if I see some of you laughing, but a few of you shouldn't. <laughs> I said a couple of you here, I've seen more hair on a bar of soap than's on your head. <laughs> wear that hat. You didn't know though, did you, lady? You looked at me and said, my golly, I had no idea he's a man of little hair. I'd take the hat off women and go, oh, he lost his hair. No, I did not. It all migrated south. <laughs> I don't even buy head and shoulders no more. I buy head, shoulders, back, feet, and butt. <laughs> and it comes in the big bottle size. Head, shoulders, back, feet, and butt with the conditioner, and it's for good for your skin. <laughs> I still enough shampoo from the Holiday Inn Express to last me a year. <laughs> I had to come in here early and get hair and makeup done. Okay, the hair lady went like this. <laughs> You're good. The makeup lady lost money on the job. <laughs> she went back to the truck three times. <laughs> Look, I got a full head of hair. That's a redneck toupee right there. <laughs> it's a country hair club for men. I don't feel so bad about it. I did, I've gained about 20 pounds since COVID. I was back in my football playing days for a while there. Now I've gained 20 pounds and they said the other day, I saw a thing where it said, women love a dad bod. Have you heard this mess? Women love, 78% of women love a dad bod. Then I'm in like Flynn because I got a granddad bod. <laughs> and it said women like a man who is not as successful as them and maybe one's not as smarter, doesn't make as much money. <laughs> you hit the trifecta right here. <laughs> I'm a redneck Brad Pitt, lady. <laughs> I still do farm, no joke. We grow uh, specialty mushrooms on our farm. We grow a bunch of specialty mushrooms. I know what some of you are thinking, not those specialty mushrooms. <laughs> We're called Carolina Mushroom, <laughs> Carolina Mushroom Farm. And we got a big sprinter van with big mushrooms on the side that says Carolina Mushroom Farm. And every time I pull up to a stoplight, some dude looked like he'd escaped from Colorado goes, dude, you got some good mushrooms? Yes, sir, I have, all my mushrooms are good mushrooms. You know, I mean the kind that really are good. I go, ours are great on pizza. <laughs> Here's the problem. We're farm to table. That's a big thing now, everywhere in the country, farm to table, so you know where your food's coming from. So we're farm to table, we sell a lot of stuff at farmer's markets. Now, here's the problem. My son-in-law and my daughter pretty much run the farm. Me and my brother and sister own it. We sell a lot at farmer's markets, and there's a big farmer's market. Raleigh has about 10,000 people on a good Saturday, and we gotta deal with people who have no idea where mushrooms came from, who have no idea what farmers actually do, and they don't let me go because they used to have a really great filter between here and here. A hundred mesh stainless steel filter where it would say, don't say that, don't say that, don't say that. Now I've got a raggedy wore out Mr. Coffee between here and here. As I have turned 60, I have become Walt Kozlowski from the movie Grand Torino. 
Some of y'all seen that movie, haven't you? Get off my porch! Get out of my yard. So they won't let me go to the farmer's market. We were kind of in a bind. We had to go to the farmer's market. We didn't have enough people. We usually have to have two people to market. They sent me. My son-in-law says, Dad, look, just hand me the mushrooms. We sell them. All you need to know is they mushrooms, they for sale. <laughs> Don't tell them how, why, what. Don't say nothing to people because you're not good with people. I'm a corporate speaker. I'm a comedian. Exactly. <laughs> We got to the farmer's market and it was hand over fist, just shoving mushrooms that people were selling like crazy. About one o'clock it eased off. My son-in-law says, I got to run to the restroom. I'll get us a couple of hot dogs. Remember, they mushrooms, they for sale. That's all you got to say. I'm standing there, my son-in-law hadn't even got out of the way and I see this Karen coming up. Y'all know what I'm talking about, a Karen? <laughs> this chick couldn't have been more of a Karen if it was tattooed on her forehead. She's standing there looking at me like this, looking at our mushroom van. Big, we have a big booth. Carolina Mushroom Farm. She walks up and goes, right, is this a family farm or is this a corporate farm? They're mushrooms. <laughs> they for sale. <laughs> I know that, but is it a family farm? I go, look lady, me and my brother and sister are on this farm and my son-in-law runs it. It's a family farm. Well, why does it say limited liability corporation? So when people like you get sick, you won't sue us. <laughs> She goes, I've got some questions to ask before you sell me these beautiful mushrooms you've got laid out here. Oh, good. <laughs> Are they non-GMO? They mushrooms! <laughs> they for sale! <laughs> you don't spray them with Roundup? <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> okay, good, so they're non-GMO. Yeah, they're non-GMO, but they're mushrooms! They for sale. <laughs> Are they gluten-free? <laughs> look, look. They mushrooms. They're not wheat. They're not bread. They're not flour. They mushrooms. They for sale. Oh, good. One more question, and then I'm going to buy these beautiful mushrooms. Oh, good. I'm looking forward to this $8 sale. <laughs> and this is the most important, because... Whatever you say, I just don't eat anything unless it's organic. Well, it doesn't look like to me you've missed too many meals, lady. <laughs> That's why I should not, but I said it under my breath. Unfortunately, she had under your breath hearing. <laughs> kind of like my dad, you know. When I was growing up, my dad would say something like, I'm gonna slap you in the middle of next week. I go, could you make it tomorrow? Cause I got a test I hadn't even studied for one bit. My dad's idea of timeout was how long it took you to come to. Because <laughs> I promise you, that's a man, that was a man that was the cure for ADD. He could get your attention. <laughs> now, getting back to the mushroom lady. Are these organic? Yes, they are. Are you sure? Lady, I picked these mushrooms at 5.30 this morning. And if you saw what these mushrooms were raised in, that's as organic as it possibly can. <laughs> You don't believe me? Smell my finger. Cause that don't come off. That'll stick with you. That's a true story. I, I ain't even made a word of that up. I ain't smart enough to make one word of that up. People do stupid things, I just write it down. You know, most comics are always talk about how much they hated high school. Not me, buddy, I loved high school. I loved high school. High school was the best time of my life. I played high school football. I love football. football. Utah's a football state. Y'all got a university at every exit. <laughs> got the most educated people I've ever seen in my life. No matter where I got off, it was a university. <laughs> I love football. I ain't much on uh, college football. Well, I like college football, and I don't care for the pros one bit, but I love high school football. Because, see, I played high school football from 72 to 80. Best eight years of my life. <laughs> most of y'all got that. God, God bless y'all. That's amazing. That's, most of y'all got that. I'm, I'm so proud of you. I went to high school from 72 to 80. Matter of fact, I made team captain all three senior years. 
laugh. You laugh if you want to. That's pretty good. My third senior year, I was not only team, I was not only team captain, I was assistant coach. <laughs> you don't see a lot of player coaches in high school, do you? You just don't see that. And it ain't like now. They just passed a law in North Carolina, the stupidest law I've ever heard of in my life, that a kid has to play, has to play, if he's gonna play high school sports, he has to pass his grade and attend school. <laughs> you people have that here. Are you kidding me? How are we ever gonna compete with the SEC in Alabama if the kid actually has to go to school? <laughs> I played ball with guys never even went to school, just showed up for practice. And no, they gotta go to school now and attend class. I never forget my third senior year, I was team captain. We were playing a big 4A school in Raleigh called Garner. We were a little 2A school, little farming community, and we were all big boys, all twisted steel and sex appeal. Yeah. <laughs> and every time we played in big 4A schools in Raleigh, we'd beat them like a red-headed stepchild. Yeah! Of course, I mean, we should. Most of us was 26, 27 years old. I mean, <laughs> you can't beat a 15, 16 year old. I mean, what good are you? You're a grown man. <laughs> One night we played Garner. Garner had an all-state running back, went to Clemson on a full scholarship. And that boy was good, but he was coming up the middle and he won't run in on me. I played nose tackle middle linebacker. He tried to come up the middle, bam, I'd eat his lunch. Take him out. After quite a few plays, I've been mean, giving him negative yardage. He got tired of it, threw a quick pitch. He caught it in a run and he's running down the sideline. And there's three of us chasing him. And as he's running down the sideline with his quick pitch, three of us chasing him and we're ready to tackle him. We look. There's a 10-year-old kid running up the sideline going, tackle him, daddy, tackle him, daddy! <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. You and your kid ride the same bus, that's something special right there. <laughs> People ask me all the time, were you funny in high school? Not really, I was a pretty intense young man. And I was a big kid in high school. Matter of fact, I've been a big man all my life. When I was in the eighth grade, brother, I was six foot 190 pounds in the eighth grade. Of course I was 18 at the time. <laughs> I was dating a teacher driving a school bus. <laughs> Back when it was okay to date a teacher. Some of y'all old enough to remember that, don't you? Man, if I hadn't dated Miss Daughtry, I'd have never got out of high school. <laughs> well, good, she was only two years older than me, come on. I do remember my third senior year, we, uh, we were playing Walter Easton, this guy that this we played against for five or six years. And uh, coach, we were in the defensive huddle, and coach went, boys, Walter's bigger, faster, meaner, tougher, and a better athlete than anybody on this team. But by golly, y'all are better coached than he is. And we gotta attack Walter's weakness. Now, Walter was six foot tall, 220 pound, run about a 4'6", 40, and looked like a piece of stove wood. They want a weakness on him. And I'm standing down in the huddle like this. He said, we're going to attack Walter's weakness. And before I could stop myself, I said, hey, coach, I heard he's pretty bad in geometry. <laughs> Maybe we throw a Pythagorean theorem at him. We could trip him out before he crosses the goal line. <laughs> and back then, a coach could put his hands on you. And he grabbed me by the face mask, jerked me off the ground. And he had just finished smoking a Marlboro and went, boy, and all the smoke just filtered into my helmet. <laughs> Of course, I hadn't had that in about three hours, so I went Because <laughs> I am from North Carolina where tobacco is considered a vegetable. <laughs> where we have two towns named Winston and Salem. <laughs> he said, run till you die, Mr. Smart Alec. And I ran till I puked. And he come over there and he jerked me up and he said, let me tell you something, boy. Shoot your mouth off in my huddle one more time. I dare you, I double dog dare you. Just say one more thing funny in my huddle. Next time I'll run you till you die. But that's gotta be the funniest thing I ever heard in my life. <laughs> He's pretty bad in geometry. He's the old Pythagorean theorem up. Which is pretty good, because I didn't even know what a Pythagorean theorem was. <laughs> that's a great laugh. She knows what a Pythagorean theorem is. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Can you believe today's technology? I cannot believe the technology we have today. I have a smartphone with an idiot trying to use it. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Had I known my life was gonna revolve around a keyboard about that big, one of my three senior years, I'd have took typing. <laughs> if I'd have known 
I was gonna be married this long. One of my three senior years, I'd have took Homac. <laughs> I am married, I've got three beautiful daughters, and I have six granddaughters. Yeah, it's an estrogen fest at my house, folks. <laughs> I've been around so many women, when I'm on the road by myself at a hotel, I put the seat down. <laughs> Just in case the maid needs to go. I mean, really, come on. I'm that kind of guy. I've taught all my girls how to hunt and fish and shoot a gun and drive every piece of equipment on my farm. They can drive it all, do it all. And luckily, my wife's a good fisherman. She's from New Jersey. She's a farm girl from New Jersey. I know. The Garden State. Yeah, sure it is. <laughs> New Jersey's the Garden State. Although she's from South Jersey where they got a lot of beautiful farms. Jet black topsoil in South Jersey. Beautiful, deep jet black topsoil in New Jersey. Because see, that's where the mob buries all the bodies. <laughs> I don't know if you know any Italians, but they're incredibly high in potash, phosphorus, and nitrogen. <laughs> it's a really good double crop system they got going there. But she loves to fish and she's good at it. And I have a farm, I got a small farm and we got four ponds on it and I got some, you know, shaggy headed red Angus cattle there. And so we go down and I'll, so my, my grandbabies are now like, Pop Pop, can you take me fishing and teach me how to cast out like my mom? Now my mom has this weird Yankee New Jersey cast where she goes, <laughs> like swinging a baseball bat. And I want to go, you're wrong, but I know better. <laughs> And she can chunk it a mile, but don't be within a 45 degree arc anywhere around her. <laughs> or you're gonna get a MEPS 33 hung in your earlobe. <laughs> kind of like when my middle daughter came home from school one time, went out and got some piercing, cause she was the, uh, the, the bad one. Come home with what I could only describe as a MEPS 33 lure hanging off her eyebrow. <laughs> what do you think of that? What, did you fall down in a junkyard? <laughs> Come on, three days later, had a big D-ring booger catcher in her nose right there. <laughs> what do you think of that? I didn't know me and your mom had trouble with you rooting out and under the fence. <laughs> okay, for those of you never rode, raised hogs ever, <laughs> hogs root out and under the fence, you put a big D-ring in her nose and it makes her nose sore. She didn't get it, don't feel bad. <laughs> I had to tell her too. I take my grandbabies down to the pond. They want to learn how to cast out fish, take the hook off. My wife's a good fisherman. They go, we want to go fishing. I go, go to the shop. I got 29 rods and reels hanging up in the back of the shop. Okay, pick you one. We want our own. Oh, I don't care what you want. You're not getting your own. I got 29 rods, pick two. Don't get the big marlin rods I use when I go offshore fishing, 200 pound test line. Get the ones at the far end, the little small rods and reels. We're catching a little crappie, we're catching bass. Get those. We want our own rods. Well, I don't care what you want. So I'm at uh, Walmart buying rods and reels. <laughs> I did mention to my grandkids, right? The one wanted a mutant ninja turtle fishing rod, which is easy to find. The other one wanted a frozen. You know what I'm talking about? It's show frozen. If I never hear that again in 97 years, I'll be happy. <laughs> let it go, let it go. We go down to the pond. Got about a 10 acre pond, 20 acre pasture around it. The girls are casting, you know, like, here, let me show you how to cast out. My wife's casting out, reeling in, taking the fish off, baiting the hook. Man, she's just catching fish like crazy. The babies are useless. Bye bye, cast out. I gotta cast out real in, take the fish off. I can't even get a line in the water. They're catching more fish in a shrimp trawler. <laughs> Piling them up on the bank. And cows are curious animals. I don't know if any of you people been on the farm. Cows are incredibly curious animals. They come down like, hey, 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 what are you doing? Put that back. We got a drink out of there. Come on. So I look over, my wife's just catching them, man. She's reeling them in, taking them off. The kids are standing, and the cows come up, and this great big red Angus, this great huge red Angus, comes up and gets tight right in behind my wife and starts sniffing. <laughs> right about her belt line right there. She doesn't know it. There's this big red Angus cow right behind her. <laughs> and I'm waiting for her, and that cow will go, <laughs> my wife will jump in the pond. I will wet my pants laughing. <laughs> She has called me stupid once a week for 20 years. I'm waiting for this opportunity to go, stupid! <laughs> and me and the girls see this, we're about to die. She's reeling in, never looks back, reels in, swings out. <laughs> hooks that cow right there in his upper lip. That's what the cow said, oh. 
cow takes off running, my wife swings around. <laughs> looks up and goes, what do I do? <laughs> Shut your hook, baby! <laughs> Keep your rod tip up! <laughs> Come on, honey, play him, play him! <laughs> nigga heels in, nigga heels in, nigga heels in! All right, give us a drag, give us a drag. Keep your rod tip up. Pump it on the way down, pump it on the way down. <laughs> and you guys laughed. My wife landed an 1,100 pound red angus. <laughs> An eight pound test line. <laughs> we hold the record in North Carolina for red angus on Trilene Spiderwire. <laughs> that is absolutely a true story. You can't make that up. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you how it really happened. <laughs> and I'll show you how a joke is written. That is a true story. We're at the pond, I'm showing the grandbabies how to catch fish, cast out real in. My wife, really, unbeknownst, there's a red angus walking behind her. Remember this? Don't walk anywhere around this crazy woman. <laughs> and she hooked that cow and it's cheap with a broke back rebel, treble hook. It jerked her around and took off running, just like I said. Before she could say, what do I do? It jerked a brand new Zepco 33 out of her hand because I buy the very best Walmart has on the sale. <laughs> and proceeded to buck, jump, and break that rod in 47 little pieces running around the pasture. Next day, I got this cow in a big old head gate, got it ratcheted down. I'm trying to cut not just one hook out of its face, but two, because this bomb runs jumped around until both hooks are caught in this cheek. But in my mind, I just see my wife going, ah, shut your hook, honey. <laughs> and that is how our joke is written. <laughs> that's it. You take life's little gifts and you put it out there. It's great raising cattle, it really is. Another way to just hide as much money as possible. And the way they're spending in Washington, there ain't gonna be much left. <laughs> I do wanna thank you for having me here. What an honor and a privilege it is to finally be here at the beautiful Dry Bar Comedy Club. I'm so excited to be in front of a wonderful crowd like this. Most of you guys got it, those of you didn't, I know the accent's tough, people. <laughs> I'm as country as a turnip green and southern as a brown egg, but my family's been in North Carolina since 1760. We are, yeah, that's a long time. <laughs> We're the epitome of everything wrong in this house. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen.